Hi, this is Dr. Phoenix. Today I'd like to show you how to read a pedigree, how to determine whether the traits that are being represented on the pedigree are passed by either dominant, recessive, or sex-linked genes, and also how to possibly determine the genotypes of as many of the individuals on the pedigree as possible. So let's look at an example. Here's a pedigree. How do we determine whether the trait is dominant, recessive, or sex-linked, first of all? Well, let's just look at these three, um, these three keys. First of all, if the parents of the kids have the disorder as well, then the, uh, the gene is probably a dominant gene that's uh, causing this disorder. If the parents of the kids have it, it's probably dominant. If the parents of the kids don't have it, then it's most likely going to be a recessive disorder. And if you look at the pedigree and it looks like it's mostly boys, um, then there's a good chance that it's sex-linked. All right, so let's look at this pedigree. Let's use those three rules and see if we can determine whether this is a dominant recessive or sex-linked trait. Uh, as we look over this pedigree and look at the individuals uh, in each of these uh, generations, we can see that um, it looks like parents, one of the parents of this genera generation has the disorder, um, a parent of this generation has the disorder, a parent of this generation has the disorder. So if we use that rule, this is probably going to be a dominant uh, dominant gene that's uh, being passed along creating this disorder. So if that's the case, if the dominant gene is creating the disorder, then we automatically know the genotypes of everybody in this family tree that does not have the disorder. So let's just use uh, as an example, let's just use big H and little h as our as our letters for our alleles. If it's a dominant transmitted disorder, then everybody that has the disease must have at least one dominant gene. So everybody that has the disorder all the colored in ones must have at least one big H. And we can go ahead and put in a big H everywhere there is a person that has the disorder. We know that much. Let's see if this works now. Here we go. We can put a big H here. We could put a big H here. We could put a big H here. And we can put a big H here. We also know everybody that does not have the disorder must be little h, little h. So let's go around and fill in every person that does not have the disorder. All right? They have to be little h, little h. If they have a big H, then they would have the disorder. All right, so we have a whole bunch of information already just knowing that this is a dominant uh, transmitted disorder. All right, so how can we figure out these blanks? Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Uh, so let's see if in this situation we can. In order to figure out the blanks, we're going to have to look at the kids. And so the kids uh, of this family would be here and here and here here and here. Keep in mind that this mother, the only thing that she can give to her kids is a little h. A little h. So all of these kids right here that are little h, little h, got one of their little h's from mom. That means the other little h must have come from dad. So dad has to be that. Okay, One little H had to come from mom, because that's all she could give. The other little H had to come from dad, so that means he has to have little H. So let's go down here to this family. 
they have a child that's little h, little h. One came from mom, the other little h had to come from dad. Um, this is a, a daughter who has the disorder, got the big H from dad. That means the little h had to come from mom. Over here, again, the big H came from dad, the little h has to come from mom. Down here we have um, a son, it's little h, little h. And the big H of this daughter came from dad. That means mom had to give the little h. Same thing here. This son received the big H from mom. So the little h had to come from dad. And the big h from mom, the little h had to come from dad. So we can see in this particular pedigree, we were able to fill in every one of the genotypes. That's unusual. You can't always do that. All right. Let me clear that. Let's move on to another example. This is an example of a recessive transmitted disorder on an autosome. Notice that neither parent has the dis disorder but there are children that have it. So let me expand this. When you have a recessive link disorder like this um, where um, we know that in order to have the condition you have to have two recessive alleles we automatically know the genotypes of anybody that has the disorder. So let's, in this case, use big B and little b. Everybody that has the disorder is going to be little b, little b. All right. In order to have it, in order to have the disease, they have to have both recessive alleles. So everybody that doesn't have the disorder has at least a big B has at least a big B okay so we know that much for all of the rest of them so let's see if we can figure out um, the second allele for the ones that don't have the condition. Well, when you have children that have a recessive condition, that means they, they got a, a recessive allele from both parents, a little b from mom and a little b from dad. So that tells us that mom and dad both must be heterozygous, big B, little b. All right, so we can figure out mom and dad. Now what about the remainder of the children? This one and this child and this child. Could this daughter have gotten um, a big B from mom or dad? And the answer is yes. Could this child have gotten a big B, I'm sorry, a little B from mom or dad? And the answer is yes. So this child could be big B, big B, or big B, little B. So could this child and so could this child. We do not know by looking at the pedigree whether they received a big B or a little b as the second allele. All we know is the first allele. All right, here we have, uh, let's come over to here. Let's look at this mom and dad and their kids. All right, can we figure out the alleles of any of these? We know that mom here has a little b little b so she could only give a little b to her kids so that being the case each of these children would have to have a little b and the father um, could be big b uh, big b or big b little b the father could be either one. So we do not know what goes in this blank. In this scenario over here, um, mom and dad neither have the disease, uh, none of the kids have the disease, so 
all of these kids got a big B uh, from mom or dad. From mom or dad, they could have also gotten as their second allele a big B or a little B. We do not know um, either mom or dad's genotype or the children's genotype based on this information. Okay, so we have a lot of blanks in this one. Alright, the last one that we're going to look at, um, let me clear this out, the last one we're going to look at shows us a sex link trait. Now many times um, you'll see pedigrees that show a half filled in circle or square, and a half filled in uh, circle or square indicates that they are a carrier. All right, so that makes it kind of easy because you know the genotype of the carriers is going to be heterozygous. Um, but let's look at a situation where um, it's not filled in uh, halfway so we don't know whether someone is a carrier and see if we can figure it out. Alright, so here we have a pedigree that shows uh, only boys that ha have the condition. So that kind of keys us into the fact that this is probably going to be sex linked. This is probably going to be sex linked. Um, so, first thing we can do is go around and, and put in the males and females X and Y chromosomes. So, this is a male, so let's put in XY. This is the female XX. XY. XX, XY, XY, XX, XY, XX, and let's do these kids right here. Um, XX and XY. Alright, so if it's a sex link condition, we automatically know that the boys have the recessive allele. So let's use um, let's use the letters uh, big H and little h uh, to make it easier for us to see them. So we know that all the boys that have the condition are going to be little h right here. All right. We can also put this boy in. We know he's going to be little h right here. Alright, now what do we know about the females? We know that the females that um, are normal have at least at least a big H. We know that this female has a big H. We know that this female has a big H and this female has a big H. Now, what about the boys that don't have the condition? If the boys don't have the condition, they have to have a big H. Alright, they're normal. So we know these boys are big H, big H. And we know that this mom over here has at least one big H. All right, let's see if we can figure out um, the second allele for some of these ladies. All right, here and here and here and here at least. All right, so we have... Um, of these children of this family, we have um, a girl here, and so let's look at where she would have gotten this big H from. This big H would have to have come from mom, correct? The other X chromosome came from dad, that's what makes her makes her a girl. So that X chromosome is carrying a little h. So we know that this girl is carrying this little h. She is a carrier. And in fact, any other girl is going to be a carrier. Big H came from mom, little h came from dad. So we know that these girls are going to be big h, little h. These girls are carriers. Now what this mom is, um, we don't really know. We know that she passed this big H on to her son here and this big H she passed on to her son here. 
Okay, but she still could have had a little a little H here and passed it on to the son. It's just that we don't know in this situation. All right, so let's come on down to this family right here. We know uh, dad's genotype. We know mom's genotype. And so we can see that uh, mom passed on um, her recessive allele for this condition to her son in this, in this situation. This girl got um, one of her big H's from mom or dad, could have been either one, and she could have gotten a big H or a little H from her mom. So we really don't know what goes into this blank right here. Again, over here we can see that this is a boy. This boy received this little h from his mom. This daughter has an x and an x chromosome, one from mom and one from dad. We know that dad had to give a big h. Mom could have given one or the other. We do not know from looking at mom and dad what this is going to be. But uh, we could come back and look at the kids and try to figure out what this is. And uh, in this situation, we won't be able to figure that out. Okay, so that's just a couple of a uh, couple of hints on how to figure out um, how a trait is transmitted by looking at a pedigree and also how to determine the genotypes. I hope that's helpful to you and uh, feel free to uh, shoot me a question on my big campus or bring your questions to class.